opposite David Lloyd and myself here in the studio at Emirates Old Trafford on uh, what should be the start of the county championship season. Lancashire obviously uh, hoping to play Surrey, but the weather uh, is thwarting us as it is so many sporting events uh, and outside the events uh, so far this summer. But having said that, David, it's lovely to see you and like your hat, you're a bit Fred Dibnerish that. Well, uh, in yeah, Lancashire, yeah. you need a, a, a flat cap. Did you just mention summer then? <laughs> well, I did, unfortunately, yeah. yeah. It's it's just going to be wet, isn't I, it? I think it'd be a wonderful idea to play cricket in summer. Mm. I think it's got legs as that. Uh, something for the authorities to look at that, you know, it's a wonderful game played in summer. Might just encourage the uh, sides to play a couple of spinners as well. There's been a lot of criticism that Lancashire won't be able to play Tom Hartley because Nathan Lyon is here. Uh, well, I, I defy anybody to play two spinners on a pitch that will be a slow pudding wherever you play in the country at this time of year. Yeah, it, it certainly doesn't help. And if you've got seven matches or five matches in seven weeks, whatever it is, it, it can have, have just pass spinners by. Mm. You're just hoping that we, we do get some weather and it warms up. It, it really, it, it, the big feature here is the ground has to warm up. Mm. It, you know, the ground has been so damp and so cold throughout winter. And I know there's an argument as to extend the cricket season into October. Well, well the one thing it will be is the ground will be warm. Mm. And so that's what groundsmen have to contend with, that, it, that it's wet through, yes, but it's cold. We do get, historically, we have been getting better weather in September and October. Mm. I was just thinking on the way in, and knowing that you and I would be together, um, this time in April, when we played the game, and I don't like harking back to in my day, but we'd have done two days of pre season We'd have come in on Tuesday, wouldn't we? Tuesday after Easter Monday, we'd have been in and we'd be running round Chalton and doing a, a few exercises and having an indoor net. And we wouldn't be playing cricket till about the 28th of April. I, I could do hours on this. April 1st, we used to turn up. Let's do it back in my day. And, and this is for Lanx TV, purely for Lanx TV. Jack Simmons, oh, yeah. you're dead right. We used to have two weeks of physical training <laughs> and that meant that we'd set off and go over the quadrant, which is the bridge over here, just at the back. And it was down into Cholton, round to Trafford Bar and back up Chester Road. That's and it. It, it were about three, three and a half miles. Jack used to take his paper with him. He, he used to take his newspaper, stop, on a bench and have a bit of a read and then kick off. And John Sullivan and Harry Pilling used to go at the back and just get over the quadrant and they'd worked out that if you just get over the quadrant and don't go down to Chorlton, turn left up King's Road, it's a heck of a shortcut which brings you down to Trafford Bar. And they just used to wait there, and I'll tell you this, that Jack Sim, I'll mention Jack again, got to Trafford Bar, he were out of puff, and he thumbed a lift on a wagon which <laughs> dropped him off at the <laughs> gates outside. Pre-season training, brilliant. Pre-season, and Jack Jack also, there was a butcher's in Cholton, <laughs> he used to visit the butchers on his pre-season training run, didn't he? he Come know, back with a couple of pork chops. He used to, wherever we were playing, we're getting off piste. Here. We are. We, wherever we used to play, home or away, and we had a bit of time off. He used to go and look in butchers' windows <laughs> and looking at, hey, look at them chops, hey, look at that piece of steel, that gammon there, lovely. Yeah. Right, look, right, let's, let's get back to, to Lancashire cricket because, um, as I say, we should have, should have been bowling the first ball in five minutes. We're not going to play uh, certainly before lunch mm. and we'll keep our fingers crossed that it doesn't rain and we might get some cricket later. But let's look forward to the to the season. A bit of a sea change at Lancashire, David. Uh, new coaching set up with Dale Benkenstein in charge, Craig White, Will Porterfield, the three new coaches. Uh, it's a challenge for them. It, it is, and I think it's been done pretty quietly as well. That uh, Benkenstein has come from Gloucestershire. He was down at Hampshire, uh, did wonderfully well at Durham, and Will Porterfield was uh, captain of Ireland and uh, down what? at Warwickshire. Yeah. Uh, Craig White has moved from women's cricket to the men's cricket as a bowling coach. So it, it's a brand new setup for players to get used to. And so, you know, having spoken to Steve Harmison, who doesn't mess about Steve Harmison, glowing reports about Benkenstein, that he would take a risk to win a game. 
And my observation, just just over a couple of years, is that Lancashire have been cautious, mm. and I think they've got to get out of that and try and take a game by the scruff of the neck. And you know, from all accounts, that Benkenstein is is that type of coach that will encourage them to take a risk. So it's it's getting the players to buy into that perhaps more adventurous philosophy that that will have pervaded over the last three or four weeks through the pre-season tour and the build-up to this game. They'll, Dale Benkinson will be trying to get that frame of mind into the players. Yeah, and, and of course you need your captain mm. a, alongside that. And, and then, you know, the team would have meetings and discuss the way forward, the way they want to play, the culture of the team, how they want to be seen. And don't take this the wrong way. I would like a little bit more aggression from the team, just from what I've seen. So that's over the last couple of years when yeah, you've been doing yeah, your, which your commentary yeah, and, your, and yeah. down here quite a while. Yeah, I, I mean, a while. I, I just love coming down here um, for for many reasons and obvious reasons. But you have a view, you know, you watch and you see what's going on and, and you think, well, that, you know, it should, be, it should be a bit tighter there. It should be a bit more aggressive. Seize the moment. You know, in a four-day game, and which will come on to the excellence of this pitch, we play, Lancashire County Cricket Club, play four-day cricket on a five-day pitch. Mm. And we've got to really um, work that out, come to terms with that. That's something that, um, that has been a struggle over mm. recent times. Yeah. And one of the reasons why Lancashire... They're finishing second a lot, mm -hmm. not winning enough games. So... One factor you, you've highlighted is you want to see a little bit more aggression, but there are other factors at play here, and you've already mentioned the pitch, but mm -hmm. pitch and weather, mm -hmm. uh, aggression, so it's attitude as well of players. Yeah, th that's exactly it, that, that you look at this surface here. This is a, a great stadium, a test match stadium with a test match ground. And so we play on five-day pitches. And, you know, no, no disrespect to other teams are around the country that, you know, they get result pitches. Mm. We produce test match pitches. What do you need on a test match pitch? You need searing pace. Mm. You need your type of bowler, Tom Bailey, that sort of bowler. Mm. You need a good all-rounder, Balderson, mm. who will slot in at number six. And, and you need a world-class spinner, Nathan Lyon. I think a wrist spinner is paramount, but the one thing you need on a pitch like this, he's pace, big pace. So the left, you've not mentioned the left arm. There's Luke Wood. Luke Wood, yeah, but, but he's away at the IPL. At the yeah, moment. Luke Wood would be a big bonus, but he doesn't play much red ball cricket. Mitch Stanley has come from Worcestershire and he's got wheels, mm. but he's injured. So you come to Saqib. Now, in my opinion, he's a top international bowler. Poor chap has been injured so much. Now, if you get him fit and fit for a long period, you've now got a potent team. Mm. Uh, so that's your, th that's your blueprint, if you like. How does Dale Benkenstein and Keaton Jennings produce that? Who are the key components in that Lancashire Well, the, the fast side? bowler, to, to, you yeah. know, you, you need, if you, if you can get three fast bowlers, you know, you've struck gold because they will get injured. Um, uh, and I'm all for rotation of fast bowlers. I'm not for rotation of spinners and batters and wicket keepers. And we've got, I think we've got about six wicket keepers here mm, at got Emirates, plenty of them. Trafford. And so, you know, the, the culture of the team is identified by the team itself. Mm -hmm. And then the style of cricket that they want to play should be in place right now. And, and then the Nikes, from a captaincy viewpoint, seize the moment well Keaton Jennings is going into his second season as captain of, of, of Lancashire so he'll have he's always had captaincy potential he captain South African under 19s actually when he was when he was uh, living there with his with his parents came over came to Durham um, and he was my first signing actually when I was director of cricket and I identified and saw leadership in him mm -hmm. he's now had a year of bedding in He's got the opportunity now to really stamp his authority. Yeah, and, you know, tactics as well. You've got to be astute uh, with tactics. Um, who to ball, when to ball, field placings. 
you know that it's all part of captaincy as we know but the biggest thing is it's that now it's that little bit of foresight now mm. right now mm. we're going for them mm. and then you might just have to soak it up a little bit as well and then you go again you break a partnership and you're in again mm. and so you know he's got to have respect of his team as well they've got to want to do it for him but more importantly you've got to do it for the badge you're doing it for the club mm. you, you're not here out of sentiment you're here because you're good enough and whether we like it or not at emirates old trafford you're expected to win that is that it, you're that is true to win that is true to uh, trophies are what mm. um, are what lancashire need um uh, and the membership and everybody associated with the club uh, demand and, and you're in, as a professional sportsman you're only in the game for a short period of time you want to win yourself don't you yeah I'd, I'd go back to again to when I was involved as a player here we had a a very forthright chairman in Cedric Rhodes mm. and he would come into the changing room pre-season and say one day cricket boys puts bums on seats and it pays the rent mm. and, and so we were always a a pretty strong one day team well he was he was right as well oh, no, he, at, he, at that time was, in the late 60s early 70s he, he, well again for, for for purely for Lanks TV that you know that was an era for me personally I, I had a, a very strong chairman in Cedric Rhodes I had a bloke who I had great respect for as a committee man who gave me so many problems but I had great respect for him Cyril Washbrook mm. You know, and people thought he was a tyrant, but he was Lancashire through and through. And he didn't mince his words at all. He and was a hard man. He was so hard. Man. He was mm. tough. But, you know, great respect for him. Mm. Because it, more often than not, he were right. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, well, just relate that back. I mean, Lancashire were blessed with two of the finest overseas players in that period, in Clive Lloyd and Farouk Engineer. Absolutely. Let's just move on. You've got one world-class overseas player this year in Nathan Lyon and mm -hmm. one overseas player that, that is, a, is a relative unknown yeah. in Tom Bruce from New Zealand, but a quality cricket averages over 50 in uh, first-class cricket in New Zealand, mm -hmm. which is a, a tough place to play. I know I played there for two years and, and the conditions are pretty similar to, to England. Um, but again, there is an aggressive and ruthless attitude in New Zealand cricket. I want to go to see how how the the national team performs. So those two players, certainly Nathan Lyon for the start of the season, but Tom Bruce all the way through, are going to play an important part. Well, we, we I don't know Tom Bruce, but I know New Zealand cricketers. He'll be no nonsense. He'll get on with it. He'll have a point to prove. He'll have a lot of pride in what he does, mm. and he'll settle in in that middle order at uh, uh, number four, number five. Slightly disappointed that Nathan Lyon was signed for the season. Then Cricket Australia sort of uh, pulled the plug a little bit, and yeah. he's only available for a certain amount. So that, you know, that disrupts you. And so, uh, listening to Bankenstein this week, that they're looking for a replacement uh, for Nathan Lyon when that time comes. And I just wonder whether he he would look again at a, a very quality spinner. Um, it, we can't get Indian cricketers, which is a shame. Mm. Yadav, get Yadav, left arm wrist spin, get him down here. Yeah, it'd be a good shout to try and get uh, one of the Indian, current Indian cricketers but out of the equation for the, the the early part of the year because of the IPL. And then it's very difficult liaising with BCCI. We've done it in the past mm -hmm. on a couple of occasions with um, Washington Sundar and Shreya Sire. Yeah. There's no reason why we couldn't re look to revisit that. For later in the uh, later in the summer, Shastri's the man. Get in yeah, touch with Shastri. Ravi, Ravi was was my Brilliant. man when I when Terrific. I got Shreyas Iyer um, signed. Went through Ravi Shastri. He went to the BCCI, and it all worked beautifully. It was mm. it was great. We've got mm. a good relationship. Um, so Nathan Lyon, I'm licking my lips at the, the prospect of one game in the next couple of months where Nathan Lyon and Jimmy Anderson play together. 1,220 test wickets between them. That'd be brilliant. And how old's Nathan Lyon? 37. 35, 6. Yeah, and Jimmy's... 41. About 30, 32, <laughs> Jimmy now. Uh, you know, that, that is real quality. 
And again, he, he, I'm talk, going back to the Benkenstein interview, and he was sort of giving it a flat back that, you know, when's Jimmy going to play? Hmm. When's Jimmy turning out? Because, you know, if I know Jimmy Anderson, he, he likes to play. He does. And he'll need to prepare for the test matches, which don't start until July. Um, so for, for, him, for him to be up for selection. That's what you've got to say, not to play in the game, to be up for selection. If it stops raining, anyway. It, yeah, but it will be summer by then, July. Hopefully. Yeah. So, there's been a lot of talk about uh, recently since in England came back from India and Tom Hartley's emergence in the, in the international scene of Tom Hartley being here at Lancashire, maybe not getting the opportunity now that Nathan Lyon's here. Dale Benkenstein has been quick to say that I can play Tom Hartley as an all-rounder mm -hmm. because his batting has improved hugely over the last two or three years. Yeah. Uh, but he will benefit not only from playing in the side but from being in and around and with Nathan Lyon. Yeah, you you, you pick a, the brains, don't you, of anybody that's got 500 and what is it, 21, 520 yeah, some, yeah. Um, test match wickets and so... If he's amenable, Nathan Lyon, and he seems a decent lad, um, you, you, you sort of tap into that knowledge. And so he was out in India. Tom Hartley was learning on the hoof, mm. and it'll be great experience for him. Um, to, you know, what you're always trying to get rid of is your bad ball and just ball consistently, hit the line, hit the length, and spin it. You know, the... the in, from a coaching perspective, the one thing, if you're a spinner, it, it, the, it's, it says what it says. Turn spin it. it. You've got it. to spin it hard. Yeah. And it's, you know, when we worked at Sky, there were one thing, and I don't think they do it now, used to appear in the bottom corner. How many revs do they put on the ball? Do they get into the red zone, or is it just rolling out of the fingers? So in, in that, if it's just rolling out, it's a slow ball, that's all. It's not a spinner. Rip it. Mm. Yeah. And there'd be huge revs on the ball when Nathan Lyon bowls. Overspin. Shane Warne, the best that's ever been, in my opinion. Yeah. Really give it some, yeah. give it a rip. Yeah. yeah. You, well, with Warney, it, it, you could hear, you, you could hear it going through the it air. Fizz, didn't fizzing it? through the air. Mm. Uh, Abdul Qadir as well from Pakistan, you got that same. Um, and so it'd be interesting to see if and when he gets ball spinners into the team. Mm. Let's talk a little bit about the batting, uh, because before we begun this conversation, we were talking about a little bit about England prospects, and you mentioned Phil, Phil Salt, who's obviously in India at the moment, yeah. but you, you were talking about him. Well, well, I think that England will be looking for a wicketkeeper uh, who will bat at seven to fit into the team. When I say fit into the team, to be able to boss 8, 9, 10, 11. Mm. So number seven has to be able to boss 8, 9, 10, 11 and to push the score on as an aggressive wicketkeeper batsman. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people will say, well, Fox is the best wicketkeeper. Yeah, you've got to think about the balance of the team and the method of play. And teams, as far as I see around the world, have a batsman wicketkeeper who balances the team and plays in an aggressive manner. And so Johnny Bairstow will be talked about. Mm. Uh, Phil Salt, definitely, because he fits uh, how they play. Jamie Smith mm. uh, at Surrey. I think they like Jamie Smith, they the do. selectors. And Robinson at, at Durham. Durham. And so they're all in the mix. And th it, for the ones that I've mentioned there, they would all want a big start. But Phil Salt's over in the IPL, isn't he? Mm, he is, yeah, he is. So... Uh, Lancashire fans and members and supporters won't see him for, for a few weeks yet. Um, somebody closer to home who will be playing in this game, Josh Bahannon, who's had a really good winter with the Lions. He's been captain, he scores runs, he's been the leading run scorer in the county championship last last summer um, and the summer before, averaging over 50. He's got a chance, surely, David? Well, I, haven't, I don't think they've said the teams either... either. Surrey or Lanks, no. whether Ollie Pope is available to play. He is available. Well, if he's available to play, it's a good matchup mm. at number three. Pope and Bahannon. Pope has played 47 test matches, averages 32 and a half. Mm. I think that place is vulnerable. Mm. And again, for any batter, 
it, it's an advantage that these test matches don't start till July. So you can get form and runs under your belt and push yourself at the selectors. Mm. So, so I suppose, in a way, it's a good opportunity with these games coming early season. We'll wait and see what the conditions are like. Mm -hmm. They're going to be seam-friendly, I would have thought, all the pitches I initially. But it's a good opportunity for, for all the batsmen to... Uh, to play some substantial innings. I think it's great for the selectors that they can get around and see how they're playing. And from a, from a batter's viewpoint, you want hundreds. 60s, 70s and 80s, I can promise you they ain't looking at them. No. Big hundreds, so concentration, stamina, uh, to bat through long periods and to be able to change gears. So yeah. you mentioned a player, Kevin Peterson. Play, 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 bang, change gear and push on and dictate the game. So what, that's we go back to how will Lancashire play. They've got to get in a position, seize the moment. Now I'm going to change this game. I'm going to dictate play. Uh, we've talked a little bit about the bowling. Let's talk about attitude and batting. Um, we talked a bit about the change in... Uh, the makeup of the coaches at, at Old Trafford. There's going to be a change in uh, the fact that there's going to be a lot of opportunity for the younger end to, to make a name for themselves mm -hmm. this summer. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking the likes of George Bell, George Ballas and Matty Hurst, Tom Aspinwall, mm -hmm. all names that have been on the periphery. Well, Ballas and not so much on the periphery, but, but they're forging their way and making a career for themselves. It's going to be a, a good opportunity for them. I, I take it th these lads have come through the academy. Yeah, all of them. So, so that works. The academy works to identify young talent, to develop young talent and get them into the team. And the ones that you mentioned there on merit, Jack Blatherwick has come from Nottingham. He has, yeah. And he's got pace, injured at the minute, mm -hmm. but he's another, he's only a young kid mm -hmm. um, and, and is a raw talent. And so the younger players are playing a part at Emirates Old Trafford. So that's telling you that, that your academy is actually working because you're always looking to produce young local players. And from my experience here, the supporters and the members love young talent. Mm. Well, Matty Hurst from Newton Willows, he's a keeper batsman. David Hughes. Jo yeah, yeah, <laughs> David Hughes from Newton Willows. George Bell from J came through... Well, the Lancashire set up, he lives in Cheshire, but yeah, yeah. but went to Manchester Grammar. Yeah. Um, Tom Aspinwall was a Sedba, Sedba lad, rugby rugby player as well, good rugby player. Gave up his rugby mm -hmm. in favour of, of cricket. Right. Um, and George, again, another Cheshire lad uh, from Hyde. So all these, there's a good liaison uh, and a, uh, agreement between Cheshire and Lancashire. Yeah, always, there always, always has was, been. Always was. Always has been. Yeah. So looking forward to, to watching those lads play. Um, can, can I just interrupt you? You talked Cheshire can. there. Just, you just talked I got a call this week from a former Cheshire wicketkeeper, Tommy, Tommy Hodgson, Hodgson. Um, who said that he'd met a bloke in Wilmslow in a pub who played in the Lancashire League and was a goalkeeper for Liverpool. Do I know him? <laughs> so, I mean, well, what's he called for a start? Give me his name. But he didn't know his name. <laughs> oh dear. Tommy will be into his 80s now, won't he's, he? I think he, he, might, he? He might be 90, Tom. Yeah. Well, he was keep, he's keeping wicket still when he was 80. Yeah, he was in, in, in a helmet. Has he not played more games for the MCC than anybody else? I think he, will, he must anyway. have. Tommy Hodgson, legend. Yeah. Um, let's just get back to the county championship. Um, 14 matches, we're talking first division, Lancashire and Surrey have been uh, champions for the last two seasons, going for three and a three on the trot. They're a very, very good setup, beautifully run by Alex Stewart. Mm -hmm. um, Lancashire knocking on the door. What, what's your overall opinion of the county championship? Strong, a, a, a real strong competition. Uh, so you, you've got Lancashire and Surrey that you've mentioned, and Surrey are the team. Hampshire, Essex, Durham. I think Durham are a, a really well-run club, um, producing cricketers, local cricketers. And I think they'll be a potent force. 
mm. um, in Division One. And of course, your Division Two teams are clamouring to get out of there, mm. just to get into that and do battle in Division One. Well, Durham have come up, haven't they? And, yeah. and they're in some quarters are being uh, touted as potential champions in Division One, like straight off the back of uh, a promotion. Is Scott Bolland playing for them? Yeah, right? he is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Matty Potts, unless he plays for England. Yeah, and uh, and so the, you know they've got good players up there. As mm. I said, they're a very well well organised and well run club. Uh, Marcus North is director of cricket. Uh, Campbell is the coach, um, and they play in a push forward way. They push the game on. Um, I, I go. I'm, I'm only an hour from there, mm. so I pop up there from time to time. It's a good setup. Mm. Uh, Be Beef is Beef is chairman. Our our great mate Beef. Lord Beefy. both. But them. yeah, but they keep him well away. They keep him well away from anything <laughs> to do with decision making. <laughs> Yeah, but he's passionate though. You can't fault that. He's passionate about cricket still and always will be. That's right? why he spent all winter in New Zealand. Yeah, well, it's a good place to go. <laughs> um, right, David, Lancashire's prospects for the summer then. How, how do you see how do you see the season panning? I know you can't. We haven't got a crystal ball, but there's optimism around. Yeah, you've got to be competitive mm. in Division 1. Make no mistake, this is a tough division. Mm. And Benkenstein said after the first three matches, we'll know where we are. And I think it's Surrey, Hampshire, Essex. That's it. So you, you'll know where you are after three matches. So, you know, you want to play. Mm. You, you, you don't get any points sat watching and, and get out at every opportunity that you can. And so it, it, one day cricket will be a big push. Um, this place, Emirates Old Trafford, will be rocking for all T20 matches. Uh, do we play Yorkshire this year? Oh, we yeah. do, home and yeah, away. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. The brilliant. A Up Cup. That's right. the A Up Cup that we're playing for there. The sellouts, they are. Yeah, brilliant. Home Absolute. and away. I mean, they, they are great, great days. David, thank you very much um, for, for the time being. Uh, we've chatted for uh, best part of half an hour or so on prospects for the season. Uh, Lancashire's set up. We just hope that, uh, and we'll keep our fingers crossed, that this rain at some point begins to abate and we can get some more cricketing weather.